So I'm going to do a quick walkthrough here of how to build an upstream Linux kernel for Fedora. Um, you might want to do this if uh, you have, say, uh, a patch that you're trying to uh, check out or you just want to enable something in the kernel. For example, uh, Fedora 21 doesn't have uh, the Flash-friendly flash file system enabled. If you want to enable something that the distro has, um, for whatever reason, decided not to include, then you can have uh, some control over what gets compiled into your kernel. So um, the first thing to do is install the um, all of the package dependencies uh, for the build process. So all the packages that you'll need to build the kernel. Fortunately, this is handled by yum. You can uh, do this in one command. So this will install uh, GCC, make, the bin utils, um, all, all the things that you'll need to um, to build the kernel, which is pretty convenient. All right, after you do that, um, you can obtain the uh, upstream kernel source from uh, directly from kernel.org. I've got the blog post here. This is my blog post. I'm just going to follow along with it and add some commentary that uh, may you know, shed some light on why you're running particular commands. So this is going to get the tarball uh, for the, uh, the the uname command embedded in this uh, in this command line here. Is it will pull down the source for the version of the kernel that you're running. That way, um, the configurations, uh, the kernel, the versions and configuration files match up. Um, after that, you're going to want to decompress the tarball and uh, switch into that directory. That'll take just a minute. Um, like I said, this is my blog over here. I'm just uh, following along with these instructions. The link to this blog post will be in the video description. Um, and like I said, I'm just going through it to add some commentary uh, and possibly uh, just make it easier to understand. So what this command line does is it copies the a distro kernel configuration file which is stored in slash boot into the source directory so that it will use that same configuration file. So at this point you've got the upstream kernel source for the version of the kernel that you're currently running and the distro configuration. At this point you can apply any patches to the source tree that you might have. Um, and you can also uh, make changes to the configuration at this point. So what I'd recommend is running this make old config command. And what that will do is uh, make sure that all of the configuration options line up. Um, for some reason, the number of CPUs, it always asks you this, um, but if, unless you've got a reason to change it from the default of eight, I say just stay with eight, and then that's the only thing it asks you. Now the configuration file is synced with the build source. Um, after that, you can do uh, make menu config. This menu config target um, brings up a graphical way to uh, modify the kernel build config. So if you're wanting to take certain things out, put certain things in, this is the place to do it. Um, one thing to do, unless you're going to be debugging the kernel, um, I would recommend turning off uh, this compile the kernel with debug info. Debug info will make the compiled objects much, much larger and will reduce, will uh, make the compile take longer as well. So unless you're really interested in having this info, I'd recommend taking it out. You can also take the debug info out after com compiling by using the strip command, which will strip all the debug symbols out of the compiled objects. Um, but if you're not interested in that information, at all. There's no point in building it with the debug options and then stripping them out. Um, it's better just to not do, not compile them with the debug info initially. Um, so after that, um, we set uh, an environment variable called make flags. The make command um, access uh, uses this environment variable to figure out how many parallel make jobs it should um, run. And so if I echo this, um, You'll see that it's. I have eight physical cores in my system, and all of them are online. So it replaced that git conf command there with eight, um, which means it'll start up eight parallel make jobs and hopefully keep all of my CPUs busy. Um, after that, 
you run the actual make command. There's make and then make modules. This uh, they, they do slightly different things, but basically what this will do is get the in, build all the objects so that you're ready to, uh, it'll build both the kernel image and the kernel modules. Um, we're not gonna run this as root because it won't install the modules yet, it'll just build the module objects. So we're gonna go ahead and start that. This is the, pro this is the part that takes a long time because it's going to compile everything you've configured to compile, which is conceivably over a thousand device drivers plus the kernel. So this will take a little while. I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so once you're done with the compile, um, you can see that like over, over two, uh, 2,600 modules were compiled. So um, after that, you need to become root. Um, so you can just do sudo bash. Um, and then after that, you can do make modules install. And what this will do is copy the um, all the drivers out of the build tree and install them on your system under lib modules. Um, inside lib modules, there is a directory tree um, for every version of the kernel that you have installed. And so when the machine boots, it looks at what the kernel version is and then looks in the in that directory under lib modules for the drivers that are appropriate for that kernel version. So this will take a little while. I'll uh, cut to the end. So now that that's done, um, we can, the next thing we need to do is copy the kernel image out of the build directory and put it into the boot, um, into your boot partition. So that can be done with this command. Uh, the make kernel release uh, embedded here uh, is a make target uh, in the in the kernel build tree that will just produce the the kernel version that uh, that, that the kernel image is, um, and I can show you what that looks like. I already have it installed because I've run this before, but you won't get that message. So you can see that it it created the file name vm linux uh, 3.17.7, which if you run make uh, kernel release that's what it produces and that's the version of the kernel that we're building against as you can see by the working directory that we're in um, the next thing to do is create the initial ram file system that you'll need to boot the system this takes just a little bit um, well, again i've already done this you won't have to do this but uh, i'll have to force it um, and what this does is um, some of the modules that you uh, compiled are needed uh, for the pre-root file system environment. For example, if your root file system is in ButterFS, for example, the pre-boot environment will need the ButterFS module. And so this creates a small RAM-based environment uh, during boot that allows the system to bootstrap into the real root file system and continue booting. Um, so once we've done that, we can go into the boot directory and see that we um, have, well, that doesn't help much, but you can see that we've got the vanilla initial RAM file system here, and we've got the um, VM Linux uh, 317.7. So but those are the two vanilla things. Um, the last thing we need to do is... Um, regenerate the grub uh, boot menu and that's done with this command grub to make config and you can see in its output here that it found the linux image and the init rd image for our vanilla kernel so now what we can do is we can reboot the machine and when the grub menu comes up it's still going to default to the fedora uh, distro image since it has this additional version string uh, Grub orders it b before any vanilla builds, so you'll have to manually select, it, select this vanilla build, and after that, you'll be booted into your um, upstream kernel with uh, any customizations or patches that you included.